Hi, this is Bill Winky. Welcome to the Hoyt Pro Shop. And today I'm going to talk about whitetail deer hunting and uh, one of the number one questions that I get. And I get a lot of questions about equipment and hunting strategies, but surprisingly, I get more questions about what to do if you've spooked a deer. And, and the question is really, I was walking to my tree stand and I bumped the buck that I was hunting. Uh, how long until I can hunt that spot again? How long till this deer will be back here? Or I was in my stand and uh, the buck saw me or he picked up a little bit of my scent or I shot at one and, and missed him or you know in some cases you know I shot and I, I made a flesh wound and the buck got away. Uh, do I need to change locations? Uh, how long is it going to be before this buck comes back into the area? Uh, those are the types of questions that I get a lot of and and really uh, there's not a simple answer to that because it'd be really similar to saying there, there's so so many different levels of, of let's say fright uh, or the level of scare that you give to a buck. Like, uh, put it in human, human terms, if you're walking down an alley and you see a shadow or you hear a, a weird sound and you take off running and you get out of there, you know, you might go back to that alley. Again, it's not that big of a deal. It's kind of an isolated event. But if you go down an alley and you see, you know, a guy with an ax coming towards you or, you know, you, you see somebody shooting a gun at somebody else, you're probably never going down that alley again. So it's the same thing with whitetails. If they can identify the source of the scare and, and it's really something that's highly threatening to them, then they're going to avoid that area for a lot longer than if it was just more like a, a casual type of a, of a spooking. Uh, so let's, let's kind of quantify them. You're walking to your tree stand, you bump a buck. That's not that big of a deal really to the deer because think about their world. You know, they've got people that are out there, uh, you know, going in some cases on nature walks. They've got farmers checking fence. They've got, you know, various human activities in the areas where they live. Uh, granted, if you're right in the core of their area, right in their sanctuary, that's different than if you're on the fringes uh, of the areas where, where they range. So keep that in mind. Um, so anyway, you bump them on the fringe, I wouldn't even worry about it. I mean, that wouldn't even enter my mind as to whether or not I'm going to go back to that spot you know, soon or, or wait. I'd hunt it you know, on, on a normal rotation. But if you bump a buck in his sanctuary, um, more than likely that's going to have a bigger impact on him. It might be you know, a week, 10 days, maybe even two weeks before he experiments enough coming back through there and determines that it's safe there again and then you know he's back on natural movement. Uh, if the deer smells you in the stand that's not as big of a deal as if he sees you in the tree or identifies you as, as a, a definite threat and a specific location. Uh, for a deer to pick up human scent in the field not a big deal. He runs off you know if he avoided all the places where he smelled humans in most environments you know he's going to be living in a hole in the ground. So you know he's going to have to come back to that area at some point, but if he identifies your tree stand location with specific danger, he's going to be a lot less likely to move naturally uh, right in that area. So keep that in mind. You know, if that happens, you probably need to move or you can expect it to be a while before that buck is back in there again, uh, coming back to that, that specific location. Uh, does are just as important as bucks. You know, you think in terms of the buck I'm hunting I bumped, yeah, but what about if you bump does in an area? You know, there's a lot of body language that takes place between deer that communicates you know, lots of different things. And one of the things it can communicate is a sense of danger or a sense of tension. So if you're bumping does in an area and they come back through there again, they're going to be more tense. Uh, and that's going to translate through to the other deer, making them uh, less comfortable and less likely to move naturally in that area too. So obviously, you know, it comes back to you never want to bump anything. Um, and when you do, the level of the scare, you know, how, how identifiable the specific threat is, you know, you as a person to a specific location, um, that's really going to dictate how the deer react to it. Uh, the more specific and the more threatening, the more likely that you're going to have to move, uh, find a different part of that buck's range where you can hunt him, uh, or at least wait a long time uh, before you start hunting him back in that area. So that's a long answer to a short question. But I appreciate you joining me, and uh, hopefully we can bring you some more whitetail tips here at Hoyt Pro Shop.